So I would like to tell you about the implementation of uh, GW in GPO, which has been my PhD project. So uh, first of all, a bit of a motivation. So uh, what most people do is uh, density functional theory. And as you know, the uh, main quantity there is uh, the exchange correlation functional, which is a big unknown, or maybe the potential. And uh, most of the functionals are kind of empirical or semi-empirical. Um, and there are some problems uh, related to that. First of all, um, we do the Kohn-Sham scheme, where we have uh, effectively non-interacting electrons. And that leads uh, to a couple of problems that we don't know how to really interpret the Kohn-Sham states, the eigenstates, and the energies that we get out. We don't really know what is the physical meaning of that. And um, this also leads to the band gap problem that we have. Uh, usually what we do from, from Kohn-Sham calculations, we take the homo energy, or we take the lumo energy, and we say the difference is the band gap of our system, for example, the system. Uh, which has been introduced in the original work, which is uh, 
can think of it as a static approximation, um, which has a correlation part, um, which describes the interaction of the Coulomb hole um, with the surrounding electrons. And then there's a term which looks like the exchange of the screen catch. Um, another approximation is for the dielectric function. And uh, this is called the plasma pole approximation. This is very popular. And in this approximation, you model the frequency dependence of the dielectric function. Because this, uh, this function here depends on the wave vector and the frequency. And uh, for the plasma pole approximation, you just model it as a single pole arising from the main plasma excitation. And this is uh, proven to be very efficient for a lot of different systems. And uh, we can also do what I call fully dynamical GW. This means that we calculate the response function uh, on a frequency grid for all the frequencies and then um, do a convolution in frequency space of this, uh, this thing. So, uh, What we do is what is called this uh, G not W not. And this means that we construct the Green's function and the screen potential from DFT, Kumchan, eigenvalues, and, uh, and energies. And the full expression for the self energy is uh, it looks like this in uh, reciprocal space and expanded in plane waves. Um, it is quite similar to what we have in the response function. So you have uh, uh, these what we call density matrix elements, and uh, here's the screen potential. And now we have a lot of sums over plane wave vectors, over um, first Brion zone, and over all the bands of the system. And usually this needs to be a lot, so you need a lot of unoccupied states for the calculation. What we can get out of uh, this whole procedure is a quasi-particle spectrum as a correction to the Kronschamp spectrum. Simply uh, by this equation here, where this is the quasi-particle energy for a given band in the X and K point, as correction to the Kronschamp eigenvalue, plus, um, this is called the renormalization factor, that here enters the self-energy, the exact exchange contribution, and we have to subtract the exchange correlation part from the Kuhn-Shan. So, one very tricky thing in any GW calculation is a conversion. You see there, there were a lot of summations, and uh, this is something that has to be tested very carefully. Here is a um, first example, this is for silicon. Um, Convergence with respect to the number of bands that we have in the calculation and the number of plane waves. And um, so the dash line here is what we get with all the A, is for the direct band, if I'm not And then we'll vary the number of bands and uh, the, the plane wave cutoff, which defines the number of plane waves that we have. <coughs> so you can see it here, it converges quite fast with the number of bands. But uh, we have to go to a curve of here is 150 dB. Um, and usually these two parameters, they don't converge independently. So if you increase your plane wave cutoff, usually you also have to include the number of bands in the calculation at the same time. And this is something that also can be done automatically within the code. And there's still a big discrepancy to the experimental result up here, and this is simply because of k-points. So this was done with a small number of k-points, and uh, the next parameter that needs to be converged is the k-points. Uh, this is shown here. This is for zinc oxide. It's a very similar plot. Here I vary the number of k-points and uh, the plane wave cutoff, and at the same time the number of unoccupied bands. So what I do here is I choose always the number of bands equal to the number of plane waves given by the curve. 
uh, yeah, here you can see that obviously um, three by three by three k points is not enough. We go five, seven, and nine, and you can see how it converges. The nice thing about this is that we can see it's uh, the, the convergence with respect to the Penguin cutoff just shifts constantly with the number of k points. So we're kind of a way to extrapolate our result. So we can do uh, we can do these two <coughs> convergence tests independently. But uh, unfortunately, the way this uh, convergence goes can be quite different from system to system. Here, the curve is quite flat, but for other systems, uh, it could be that you have to go to much higher energies to get a conversion results. Well. Uh, so this is to summarize um, some results we got for a group of semiconductors and insulators comparing the experimental band gap to the theoretical band gap with different me methods. Um, black dots here are the LDA results, which is much too low, really far off. Um, we also did a non-self-consistent PDE0 calculation, which usually gives uh, band gaps which are too high with these are the green triangles. And then, uh, the G not W not starting from LDA wave functions and bang loads, they get really good results. Um, very close experiments. We also did uh, GLBSC calculations, which um, is a special potential that varies in G4. Um, so what, what is uh, what is GLBSC? Uh, that this is a special potential, maybe someone else will think of it. Oh, is it it's one of those with this yeah. 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 No. Okay. yeah, I discussed it yesterday. Yeah, but I can agree with you. Thank you. After 49 hours, I tried to get it. So here we want to see how um, good is the GLB compared to, to G not W not because it is very commonly used. <coughs> It is way more efficient to do uh, the G not W not calculation. Uh, it typically it takes a day for a realistic calculation, maybe. And the GLB takes you know, 10 minutes to do. So but, uh, here we can see that for these systems they agree quite nicely. Um, also have the numbers um, for, for six different systems. Uh, also comparing the different approximations that we have to the dialectic function, the static process, the plasma pole approximation, the full dynamical uh, methods. What we see is that the static and the cosex doesn't really work. Um, so we should not really use that. Actually, but uh, the plasma pole approximation and uh, the frequency dependent method, they, they almost give the same results for for most of the systems, uh, which is really nice because uh, it gives a speed up of the uh, factor of 10 to 20 using the plasma code approximation. <coughs> you can see the, the mean absolute errors compared to experiments are quite small. This is something really nice. So we can also use that uh, for low dimensional materials. Here I have an example for a uh, graphene sheet on boron nitride. And uh, this is the band structure calculated for this system. Um, one with the LDA, the black curve, and the red one with GW. And you can see there are different things happening. Um, first of all, if you look here at the K point, um, the, this band up here and this one down here, they can be attributed to, to the boron nitride sheet. So that's why I call the or a nitride gap, and if we use uh, GW, this increases a lot. I think it's almost uh, 2 EV that this gap increases compared to LDA. And secondly, you can see that the shape of the bands also change. For example, we can read off uh, the Fermi velocity here from, from uh, this region, um, for, from which comes from the graphene. 
and uh, we uh, take these data results. Um, they compare very nicely with experimental results as well. So this is something we'll never get with the standard DFT um, calculation. Another problem that we have for two um, these systems is the cell size, um, because we have to put the, the sheets in a large unit cell. This is something that also needs to be converged. And this is a calculation with Paramos 2. And uh, first, uh, look at the this a direct and indirect band, band gap that we calculated. And uh, we can see for the black curve here, it converges very, very slowly with the cell size. Here we are, uh, those are 30 angstroms of vacuum that we added to the cell in the z-direction and the result still does not converge. Um, on the other hand, Thomas implemented um, a truncation method for, um, for the Coulomb potential, so we cut it off at uh, the edges of the cell. And this is shown uh, in the red curve up here. And, uh, First of all, we can see that it converges really quickly, but also the value is much higher than the one we use without uh, the truncation method. So we expect, without the truncation, that it would converge to, to the red curve somewhere very far away, maybe 50, 60 angstroms of vacuum. So this is something one has to be very careful with when uh, calculating low dimensional materials. So I had a lot of systems. Sir? I had a lot of systems for the extension. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, we calculated some finite systems, mo uh, so, uh, molecules, and here's shown the example of water. Um, what we can see here is uh, uh, this is here, I put negative ionization potential, basically the homo energy, with respect to the plane wave cutoff, and it converges really, really slowly. So up here, uh, we're at uh, 350 EV, and that corresponds to, I think, around 10,000 plane waves and bands, so this is really huge, and it's still not converged. But what we saw is, uh, when we plot it, against the inverse uh, cutoff, inverse plane rate cutoff. It seems to decrease linearly, as shown here. We can uh, extrapolate to infinite cutoff, an infinite number of bounds. And we can read, uh, we can read up the ionization potential here, and it's around 12.1, uh, which is still um, half maybe lower than the experimental value, which is 12.6. But uh, this is probably due to, to choosing LDA as a starting point. So we start with LDA wave functions. And uh, for these molecules, LDA doesn't describe uh, the electronic state well at all. So uh, there have been other studies here with another GW code um, doing also uh, self-consistent uh, GW, which um, Makes, uh, makes it independent of the starting point of the starting wave function. So in the self-consistent scheme, you update the wave functions and then redo the calculation. And uh, this brings the, um, the, the value closer to the experimental result. <coughs> Another idea would to be to um, start from something that describes the molecule better. And in this case, it actually turned out that doing GW on Hatch of Fock is the best uh, you can do for these molecules because Hatch of Fock already describes the electronic states fairly well. This is uh, how to use the GW code. Um, it is based within the response function formula because uh, it looks very similar. Um, what you need is a ground state calculation 
can start from LDA, from PDE, from whatever you want. You just need to have the wave functions stored in that file. <coughs> find the, the number of the parameters that you want to use, the number of bands, for example. Um, then you define for which part of the spectrum you want to calculate the cause of particle energies. Um, here in that example, I chose three or six bands around the Fermi level and the uh, K points along certain directions are um, per default because all of the Brion zone. Here I choose, I don't know, going from K to gamma to something, whatever you're interested in. Uh, then you can define a frequency grid for doing a full frequency dependent calculation. Energy cutoff. Um, here you say you want to use the platinum color approximations, for example, and uh, the uh, truncation of the Coulomb potential, and then some other special parameters which are not so important right now. Then you do two calculations. Usually, first you calculate the contributions from the exact exchange, which is a lot faster than doing the actual salt energy calculation, and then you calculate the spectrum. This, I can conclude. Um, the code is fully parallelized all the cape lines and all the bands. And if you do a frequency dependent calculation, you can also parallelize all the frequencies manually uh, depending on how much memory you need. This is the bottleneck. You can use both the grid and the pain wave mode. I would also always recommend to use the pain wave mode just because uh, the ground state is much easier and faster to do usually. And files, you need a lot of them to kind of files can be really, really good. We have these three different approximations that I talk about. Um, the spin, you can do the spin ball that polarized uh, GW. And you can use the data to do the, the spectrum that you get to do, for example, ESD calculations on top of this or top of this channel. There are still some things, miss some things missing. Um, the LCAO mode doesn't work completely yet. Um, it could be interesting to look at uh, course of particle lifetimes, which is related to the imaginary part of the self energy. Um, what I'm working on right now mostly is doing self consistent to W or implementing that, which is uh, quite a large uh, calculation then to do, and then transfer it to, to GPU. I would like to thank especially you, June, and uh, it's very nice also Thomas, sorry I forgot to you, for uh, doing part of the coding and talking about it. Thank you very much. We have time for a few questions before we start this short comment on this. Uh, uh, quite a but, but the, it's a G0, W0, which means that they must have some sensitivity to the input wave function. So you, you know, it's a follow up from my previous questions. Uh, you did mention that, you, so you choose an LDA. Yeah. Uh, and then there was this comment that hard to fuck actually gave you, hard to fuck input gave you better performance. Yeah. Uh, so can one suggest that you try your wave functions as input, which has the right gap at the beginning? There's one, I mean, this would be my question to you, like, and if you would think that can, the method can benefit from using really the exact exchange and not like, like the OIP tool type of stuff, it should improve the other method. Mm -hmm. And I guess you, you can get closer to the self consistent GW mm -hmm. in one step already yeah. um, by just using the OIP, and this is what would be missing in our state calculations tool. So whether you do OIP to IP4 mm -hmm. or to SIG doesn't matter, but it's crucial to do the OIP. Because you need a conjunct formalism with yeah. not well defined analytical states. Okay, so, so, so this, is, this is the, the missing link kind of thing. Right. Right. But uh, otherwise, I agree. Yeah. It's a sick good rule to talk Think for the using the hydrophobic or the set that goes to the molecules because they are hydrophobic. Yes, yeah. 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 the solid is no. I'll explain that a little bit more. Prevent you from using, say, yeah, some kind of DTA instead of an LDA? No, no, you can, you can do that. It's just your choice. Uh, if you know that some function will be 
performs fairly good yeah. for the system you're looking at. And I think you should start with that. Because then you, the wave functions are already close. Yeah, I guess uh, with respect to that, it would be interesting to see. I mean, this GLLB seems to be quite a time that, so it would be interesting to see what happens yeah. if you start with GLLB and I see that. Yeah, yeah, this is also what we're looking at. If not, are there? Yeah, I have a very simple use it for it. I mean, previous slide. You have the specification for the cable that you want to use. Yeah. You yeah. have a sort of easier tool to get, for example, the indices for certain path. I mean, in ASC, you have this nice tool that uh, you can very easily get for FCC 15, 50 points from gamma to gamma. Um, five, so you, you, cannot, you cannot disapprobate between K points. You can only use the K points that are in the ground state okay. calculations already. And this I always did by hand, actually. Okay. Um, so essentially you have to, if you want a nice band structure, you need to have an awful lot of key points and draw. Yeah. Yeah. This would be nice to... Uh, mm -hmm. There are some... <laughs> 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 uh, so, um, yes, I think we should have a coffee break, but I think we should stick to being back at 11, so that...